An image of an oil base burning for days after a drone strike by the Ukrainian army in Proltarsk, Rostov region of Russia, has been released. As can be seen from the footage taken by a local resident, after 10 days of fire, the base was completely destroyed by fire. Although the scale of the fire has decreased, it is still raging. It should be noted that the fire covered an area of more than 10,000 square meters in the first days. Among the firemen involved in extinguishing the fire, there were a large number of injured people. In the following days, the fire spread from the oil base area to residential areas. <laughs> The United States has sent an RC-135U aircraft known as Combat Sent to Europe. It is believed to have been gathering intelligence on Russia, Newsweek informs. According to media reports, the Combat Sent landed at Mildenhall Air Base in eastern Britain on August the 18th. Since then, it has conducted several hours of flight in the Baltic region, which borders Russia and Belarus. The aircraft is designed for reconnaissance and can detect and identify signals from foreign military ground, sea and air radar systems. Intelligence collected by the Combat Scent helps determine the detailed operating characteristics and capabilities of foreign military radars, the Air Force says. This enables U.S. defense planners to develop evasion techniques and equipment that can detect, warn of, or defeat adversary systems, the article states. The exact purpose of its mission, as well as whether the collected information will be shared with other countries, remains unknown. Recently, the Boeing-built aircraft took off for its first sortie since arriving at RAF Mildenhall. It flew eastward and transited Dutch, German and Polish airspace before bypassing the Russian semi-exclave of Kaliningrad, which is sandwiched between NATO members Poland in the south and Lithuania in the north. Newsweek's map displaying Coordinated Universal Time or UTC traces the combat sense flight path in the Baltic Sea as it flies through Lithuania, Latvian and Estonian airspace to reach the shores of the Gulf of Finland. It then passes northwest of Belarus and north of Kaliningrad before returning to Mildenhall. Kaliningrad falls under Russia's Lenin military district, which was re-established on March the 1st as a retaliatory measure after both Finland and Sweden joined NATO. The Russian Navy's Baltic fleet is also headquartered there, making the territory an important outpost in the region. The flight lasted approximately six hours, but its exact purpose and the length of the combat sense deployment to Europe were not immediately clear. The Air Force's combat sent aircraft belonged to the RC-135 family of reconnaissance airframes, which were developed from the Boeing C-135 Stratolifter transport jet. Others in the lineup include the RC-135V stroke W rivet joint and RC-135S Cobra Ball. The rivet joint detects, identified and geolocates signals throughout the electromagnetic spectrum, while the Cobra Ball collects optical and electronic data on ballistic missiles. Variants of the RC-135 are forward deployed worldwide and are expected to remain in service until the 2040s. Ukrainian military operation in the Kursk region has put the Russian army in a difficult position. To reassure the Russians, Putin has resorted to a familiar scenario. Act as if nothing happened, but it is unclear how long this ruse will last, writes the Wall Street Journal. It is noted that for many, the Ukrainian armed forces invasion of Russia dealt another blow to Putin's aura of invincibility, which he maintained in an effort to portray the Russian Federation as a country opposing Western domination. However, as analyst Keir Giles noted, there is now an attempt in Russia to pretend that this is normal, that wars come and go. 
you can try to turn this into a new normal, but where do you draw the line in the current circumstances? And when the events in Kursk Oblast do end up on Russian television, commentators repeat the Russian Defense Ministry statements about Russia's military superiority over Ukraine. And in response to Russians' outrage on social media, Kremlin propagandists call on everyone to calm down. Meanwhile, Putin has not addressed the nation about the invasion of Kursk Oblast. He continues to stick to his work schedule, writes the Wall Street Journal. It is indicated that his approach serves to create an atmosphere of normality for the population, which is showing signs of growing fatigue from the unleashed war. Nevertheless, as the publication writes, Putin will most likely continue to downplay the significance of the Ukrainian armed forces invasion and is unlikely to address the Russians now. He, as a rule, seeks to speak when he can report positive results, noted Nikolai Petrov, a consultant from the British think tank Chatham House. Let us recall that deep state analysts report that Ukrainian soldiers are continuing their operation in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation and have had a new success east of the city of Sudza. The Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center said that the Russian government had apparently decided to ignore the scale of the problem that the Ukrainian armed forces were creating for them by invading the Kursk region.